regular season is in the books and it's time for the playoffs. I'm with Coach Trent Hammond and this is Great Iron Takes and Coach, a familiar foe to open up the playoffs in South Panola. Yeah, you know, this team we've played beginning of the year. We've already seen them one time this year. It's a team that used to be in our region. Uh, so we're used to playing them. It's a game that our kids get excited about. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Playing them once in the season opener. We came up just short 21-15. What can we take away from that game? Any Is it so much has changed since then that it doesn't really matter? I think so much has changed in truth. You know, you're looking at it, two different teams that have played a, a full season. Right. So much has changed scheme-wise and personnel-wise. Uh, as we look at them on film, there, were, there are kids playing now that weren't playing in the, in the first one. There were kids that were playing in the first one that aren't playing there. Right. And, and I think probably the same said about us. So it's two teams that you hope got better as the year goes by. And so it'll be a little bit different take you know, have a ball game. That was a great football game to open the season or, you know, actually any point of the season. It was just a lot of big plays, some great defensive plays on both sides of the ball. Um, any motivation from that game coming up short for this one? Or is it now that it's a playoffs, it doesn't matter? Well, I think there's always motivation. There's been motivation here ever since I've got here for us to play South Panola. Um, you know, they are the bell cow, so to right. speak, of 6A um, football so everybody gets excited about playing them I think that's motivation but also just being knowing that you were close one game gets you excited to play but then knowing that it's a playoff game you know because every kid I think if you come into it gets excited about playing in a playoff game and if you don't you're in the wrong you know it's the wrong thing for you exactly uh, of course we're in this position um, by finishing strong in the regular season, only two losses in division, but we had a tough loss at home against Oxford, 14 to three, and just couldn't really get our offense going in that game. Well, our offense moved the ball really, really well. We just didn't score. Right. Um, you know, if you look at our totals, you know, it was a ton of offensive production on us. We just got inside the 20 and then didn't make the plays to to execute it. So you hope that this week we'll be able to, to get down there and finish drives. And that's the big thing that you that you worry about is that finishing. And going in, we knew that we were going to have to be perfect right. against Oxford. And we did some things that we haven't done uh, throughout the year. In you know, laid the ball on the ground. We had a ton of false start penalties and things like that, that we haven't been a team that's done that. We've talked all year that the wave can't beat the wave and be right. successful. Right. Well, Friday night was the first night that, that we actually did some things to beat ourselves or to help beat us. Right. Defensively, another strong performance. Uh, came up with a couple of big special teams play. You talked about the defense last week, show being greatly improved. Is do you see that as kind of the, the tone setter for the game was how well we played defensively? Well, anytime you play well defensively, it, it helps you. And and you know that if you if you look at things, no team's ever going to play and make playoff runs or if they're not good on that side of the ball. So that's the thing we stress is to be good and to play sound, fundamental football. And our guys have done that, and they've gotten better each week, and hopefully they'll be up to the task this time because what people don't know, this is the number one scoring offense in all of 6A coming in, uh, uh, or us going to them on Friday. But then on the opposite side, they give up the fewest points in 6A. So, you know, they are close, as close to being South Panola as South Panola can get. They're traditional South Panola. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about them. Of course, we're going there 7 o'clock Friday night. What have you been able to take away from the film about this team? Is it like they've traditionally been in the past, run, 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 run? Well, they are run heavy, but they've got a quarterback and a big wide receiver that they've, they've gotten better throwing the ball. They hit some good plays down the stretch. Uh, and then the big thing is they have the dandy dozen tailback, right. Janari Dean, uh, 6A Mr. You know, or one of the the finalists for the 6A Mr. Football. Um, you know, he's everybody's first team player this year, um, and so they've got him, and he, he kind of leads them as they hand it to him. It makes everything else go. What about their defense? Their defense is a traditional South Panola big front, ex extreme speed on the back end, so they can run with you. They don't miss tackles, and they fly around, and they're aggressive. There's a reason why they've had that tradition. It's just they just keep it going every year. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it's almost cookie cutter. 
that uh, a kid graduates where there's one just like him that, that moves up and here he is, looks the same, plays the same, and it just keeps rolling. Exactly. When you look at the South Panola team, of course they've not won a state championship in several years now, where would you rate some of the great teams that they've had in the past, this team? Well, I don't know. I think that's kind of a tough thing to, to gauge because each team is so different. And they've had some tremendous teams. You know, they've had some national championship team. I think this team kind of probably would be one of those that fit into those early sea, uh, early Sao Panola years when they're trying to build their dynasty and right. get there. I think these guys are trying to play and restore uh, the pride of the sticker on their helmet. Makes a lot of sense. Now, let's focus on our team for a second. Um, is your approach any different now that's the playoffs? Do you rely more on your seniors to let the younger guy knows younger guys know, hey, this is means a little bit more this week? Well, I think you don't want to stress too much about it means a little bit more because you don't want kids coming in and playing tentatively right. or so to speak scared to lose. You come out and you do it like you've done every week. You prepare to win that week. You know, we only have one game to win this week. Right. So you go out and try to win that one and do everything you can to win this Friday. And uh, so that's where our focus is. The only other thing that I tell our players is that during this week, if you're a senior, you need to practice like it's your last practice. Because once you get to playoffs, you never know when the last one happens. And um, there's a statistic out that shows that only around four and a half to five percent. So that's four to five out of a hundred kids that play football are going to get to play after they graduate. Right. So for the largest percentage of them, they have to know that this week it ends, you know, or next week it ends, but that their career is slowly coming to an end for the majority. So go practice and play in a way that you would want right. that to be your stamp. Well, let's hope we're, we're saying that the first weekend of December. Absolutely. Um, That'd be great. Great. Hey, we, we were one play away from winning, so we know we can win. And, and after that, who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, Coach, appreciate it. And Friday night, South Panola, 7 o'clock. We'll see you there. Mm -hmm.